Hello everyone, I hope you're all well and again thanks very much for all the support with my videos, the likes, shares and comments. I'm very very grateful for all the support with my videos and thanks to people who support me through buying me a coffee as well, I'm very grateful. Today I'm down at Observatory Lane which is the home of Leinster Cricket Club here in Rathmines, looking out there towards Mount Pleasant Avenue and tennis courts in the distance and we can see the beautiful dome of Rathmines Church in the distance, beautiful green dome that I spoke about in many videos. It was destined for St. Petersburg but ended up in Ireland due to the Russian Revolution. Now today I want to speak about Simon Harris. Simon Harris has been doing the rounds over the last number of days trying to get more support for his cobbled together coalition, the job that nobody wanted and Harris is awaiting appointment as Taoiseach this coming Tuesday. This weekend he's facing the Fine Gael Ardèche in Galway. So well, let's see how that develops in Galway. I'm sure it's going to be breathtaking. Uh, there's a motion actually going down in Galway about should we, uh, Ireland, be pushing for lethal weapons to be sent to Ukraine. This is the uh, level of the conversation that is going to be held in Galway over the next number of days by Fine Gael, typical party of the warmongers in Brussels, the super rich, the wealthy and the 1%. So some of those motions, I'm sure we, can, uh, we cannot wait <laughs> with those motions going forward. Instead of standing up for Irish neutrality, they're more interested in standing up for the globalists and the warmongers. But Harris has been doing the rounds here in Ireland and in Dublin around trying to garner support for his cobbled together coalition. Already 12 TDs in his party have said he will not be standing next year. And now at the same time, Harris is trying to garner support from so-called independents, a rogues gallery of independents, to hang his coalition together. Some of these people have been people like Michael Lowry, a long corrupt history in Ireland, Michael Lowry has, of his profoundly corrupt, to a degree that was nothing short of breathtaking, that was found in the Moriarty Tribunal about payments that he took from said named billionaires. People like, as we know, people like Dennis O'Brien, uh, famous for that mobile phone contract that happened many years where they met in the pub on Leeson Street and discussed their deals. And they provided a mobile phone license to Dennis O'Brien, one of the richest men in Ireland. And we know about his connections to the political establishment in Irish society as well. He also, he was found to be guilty in the McCracken Tribunal, which again was part of the involvement of payments for an extension of his house provided by Ben Dunn, the now deceased business owner of Dunn Stores, for providing benefits for his business. Of course, he had a company as well, Michael Lowry, that provided refrigeration services for Dunn Stores as well. So, quo bono, who does it benefit? Benefits the corrupt gravy train of people like Lowry, who Simon Harris is now trying to court, who's still a TD. And not very remarkable because we also have other people like Dennis Nocton they're looking for now as well. Dennis Nocton is a Roscommon Galway independent TD, inverted commons independent TD. Like Lowry before him, was a Fine Gaeler, but uh, stepped away. He stepped away because he was against the closure of the emergency department in Roscommon General Hospital a number of years ago. And he went as an independent, but then set up this, or was part of a so-called reform alliance. And then they hopped into bed with the end of Kennedy's government to prop it up. And we all know what that ended up because he lost his job because of uh, meetings and dealings he had over the broad plan plan when he was minister for communications. Now he said he'll prop up Harris's regime. And also we have Noel Grealish, the Galway CD, again, who's gonna prop up the Harris's regime as well. Uh, in the context of this, it's important because Grealish himself was a member of the Progressive Democrats, ultra right-wing party, neoliberal party, party that serves the super rich policies. And uh, again, Grealish is part of the status quo. So no difference there to currently what's in place in Irish society, bound down to the masters in Brussels. And also we have people like Mark Mark Sherry, who was with Fianna Fáil, who was an independent. He lost a whip, I think, with Fianna Fáil and became an independent TD. And now he said he will not be standing in the next general election. He's supporting Simon Harris. Surprise, surprise. So what local deals are in place for all these people? Uh, apparently people like Carl Berry as well is looking now to support the government. 
to support Simon Harris. And of course, he'd probably be looking for more weapons to be sent to Ukraine. Uh, he'd be looking for Ireland to be dragged out of our neutral position into NATO. He'd also be talking about supporting small businesses and looking for a mini budget. So uh, let's see behind these guys. Well, they're trying to claim the parish pump hero and community hero. They're doing deals which is destroying our society, the fabric of our neutrality, the fabric of our independence, and the fab fabric of our sovereignty by supporting these neoliberal policies and warmongering policies also. And it's also interesting, it's not just the political class he's trying to get behind them, he's also poached the people from the media. The media in Ireland, as we all know, isn't independent, Pullum Oily. Because his new assistant government press secretary is Kira Phelan, who was a special correspondent with the Irish Examiner who had an interview with Harris a number of years ago where they were pretty palsy walsy always pushed a nice narrative to support the government. And of course now, Phelan, Kira Phelan's working now with Simon Harris on the premise to improve his image. Uh, and this shows you the independence of the media. So many of these media people are working with these eight companies and newspapers and then they do their bidding for the political establishment when they're in the when they're in their jobs and then afterwards they then move into a position as advisors, press secretaries or whatever you're having to pursue the agenda that favours the political establishment and Simon Harris. He's also got uh, Chris Dunahoo appointed as his government press secretary. Now Chris Dunahoo's history is interesting because he was also a presenter on News Talk, I think with Ivan Yates at the time, an ex Finnegaler who's now a media star in Ireland. We have Ivan Yates and uh, who does, does a, I think he does a show now with uh, Matt Cooper, another neoliberal pusher, Matt Cooper as well, who uh, Donoghue, who's now the government press secretary and he's moved into this position as well now, was a news talk presenter. So much for holding politicians to account. Be a long time waiting when these guys go into positions of power, uh, do their bidding and give the kid gloves interviews when they're, when they're interviewing them and then move into positions as highly paid advisors and uh, press secretaries and so forth as well. And it's also interesting because one of his advisors, note I said one of his advisors, he has many advisors, Simon Harris, is a new advisor called Jack O'Donnell, who's been around the block quite a number of times. He was assistant to, or special advisor to, or senior advisor to Owen Murphy, another failed Fine Gael housing minister. Also, Enda Kenny as well, and recently was with Pippa Hackett and has now moved into the position of advisor to Simon Harris. He also has an ex-Irish Times journalist called Sarah Barden, a columnist with the Irish Times, who was one of his, his other senior advisors. So as Harris is doing the rounds and going down and, and uh, talking about change and talking about going back to grassroots and all this type of nonsense, the establishment in Ireland is so corrupt to the core. We can see that with the so-called fake opposition. We can see it with the so-called independence, which we know their history of Fine Gael, and pushing the agenda that favours the super rich and not challenging the establishment. And also we can see that puts the interests of people first. We can see the, the media class moving into the positions and corridors of power, uh, which is essentially an audition for them before they go into that position as advisors and highly paid ones at that. So from uh, Rap Minds, well, let's see how it happens over the next few days with the Fine Gael Ardesh. And I'm sure we'll see many more motions like the one I mentioned earlier about sending lethal weapons to Ukraine. These fanatics are looking to send us to more war, but we need to build a sane, rational alternative in Ireland where people are talking sensibly, talking in terms of neutrality, talking in terms of putting the interests of ordinary working class and ordinary people first uh, and sense rather than the absolute lunacy that they're trying to pursue at the moment with these policies. So uh, let's do a bit more disclosing of these people and uncover them more and more. So thanks for all the support with my videos. Thanks for the likes, shares and comments. I'm very grateful. Thanks to everybody who supports me through Buy Me A Coffee. Like my Facebook page. Please press subscribe to my YouTube videos so you get notified when my videos come up. And again, let me know where you're watching from and thanks so much for all the support. So from Dublin, as the sun starts to break through here in Rathmines, I'll see you all soon. Take care. Slán. Thank you.